Let's get real for a second. Writing a resume is awkward. It's not easy to brag about your skills, your experience, and even your accomplishments. Hashtag trending ka zamana hai. So why not trending CVs be CK Jain? I'll share my 10 tips on how to write an effective software engineering resume. By In this video, I'm going to show you eight common CV mistakes that you might be making. Did you know that your CV is being vetted not by an HR person, but a machine, a software sometimes? Not just vetting, in fact, even acceptance and rejection is happening through AI and tech. We would look forward to have a shorter resume. And even when your CV does reach a human being, they tend to spend only seven seconds to assess it. Now that's a tough ask, right? But don't worry, we got you. Our team spoke with experts to understand how to make that perfect CV. The CV that will be understood by both AI and human beings. And in this video, we will not just give you gyan on what is to be done. There is enough of it and enough templates floating around it on Google for that. So on Let's Talk Jobs, we will take you step by step through the CV making process. So if you take notes along this video, by the end of it, you would have a full CV ready to light up that job market. But before we go any further, please remember to like, share, subscribe and press that bell icon. Now, choosing the right keyword is only half the job done. So when it comes to CVs, it's an ever evolving subject. Remember, trends change, new tech comes in, new softwares and templates are always around. So you have to keep yourself updated. But while researching for this topic, we came across some very interesting findings. This one done by Austin Belsack the founder of Cultivated Culture. Cultivated Culture, remember, is a career building website offering, uh, you know, to build resumes only. And they help land up a lot of people in their dream job. So he, what he did was, he analyzed some over 1,25,000 resumes. And out of all those, came up with three interesting trends. Let me tell you what they were. Number one, including a LinkedIn profile has shown to boost interview rates. But he says only 48% of the resumes actually included that. Number two, he says metrics and numbers are the best practice for illustrating and selling a candidate's value. But again, only 26% of the resumes actually included that. And they had only say about five instances of measurable results. Some 36% of the resumes had zero measurable instances at all. Number three, he says an ideal resume length was about 475 to about 600 words, but over 90,000 resumes, remember of that over 1,25,000 that he had analyzed, were outside that range. Another point to remember here is that if you use fluffy buzzwords, cliches or incorrect pronouns, bam, you will be rejected. So how do we really go about this entire process? Let's dive into some pro tips on how to write that perfect CV. Mm, near perfect CV. Also, for your convenience, we have divided this entire video into different segments. So you can skip the parts that you don't want help in and recheck those which you think are going to be really useful. You can check the chapters in the scroll bar right below on this video. First up, what is a CV? And if you're frowning upon this question, don't just skip to the next chapter and you'll get more details over there. And for those of you who want to indulge with us, let's tell you a little bit in detail. Now, CV is a short uh, written summary, remember, short being the operative word there of a person's professional experience, their education, qualification, and some personal information really. Remember your CV is the tool that helps you get that first foot in the door. It's literally your first impression. So getting your CV right is of extreme importance. And the first thing to do that is to get the structure that you're creating the CV in, get that correct. Structure is key. And the thumb rule here is let everything be in reverse chronology. All right, that way the recruiter will get to know your work history and your most recent achievement first. Okay, but don't get confused by that. Let's take it step by step, right in the beginning what you should put. Let's start from the top. It should mention who are you, an introduction really. Now, don't do the mistake that so many people do, which is like writing CV or resume right on top. It's a waste of space and absolutely unnecessary. But it's important for the recruiter, remember, to understand who is he really talking about? Who is he really seeing, right? So your name, your email ID, your phone number, and you may or may not include your address over there. 
let me give you a pro tip over here as well. Did you know that 76% of the CVs get rejected because of an unprofessional email address? Now, it would be helpful to not mention an email address that you made in class 7th, of course. So just be mindful about that. But that's essentially your step one, introduction done. Next, move on to your career goals and your achievements, right? Now, this can be a part of your introduction as well, right? Before you break up into different sections. And here you can convey what you want to achieve in your professional career. Keep it short, preferably not more than about two sentences, but it's important to quantify your achievements briefly in this section, which highlight how you have been working towards your desired career goal. For example, uh, say you're a digital marketing executive who sort of has improved the company's social media presence and increased the revenue. So you can briefly mention design social media strategy to help grow company's digital presence 10 times in one year. Now, why am I emphasizing that? Because it gives you a quantity, it tells you what your achievement really was. Now, I know freshers feel most left out here. Now, what you can do is mention something extraordinary you've done in your academic journey or internships. I think, yes, internships do play a role because those internships or the projects you have done does tell the employer or HR that you know, this is your interest area and how have you performed in those internships also play a very crucial role because have you excelled in that? Were you able to ace it or not? Did you enjoy your work or not there? So it, it gives you a kind of you know, uh, uh, persona of your persona to the prospect employer. It is essential that I grasp the candidates, academic background, learning agility, hands-on experience, capacity and willingness to go extra mile. And again, remember, when AI is wetting most of the CVs, metrics make your CV much easier for computer softwares and AI applications to really track. So tracking systems are more likely to catch numbers and will get your CV noticed and ensure that it's not really missed out in the bulk that is received. The average employer spends only around six seconds on a resume. Candidates need to be very selective on what to include and exclude because there is very less time to impress your prospective employer now. Next, having done that, comes one of the most key segments of your CV, which is your experience. Now, you have to convince the recruiter that your experience can help their company. So mention where all you have worked along with your designation, then mention for how long and what exactly have you achieved while working there. Now, this section needs to be precise and accurate and should definitely include some measurable results. Also remember, most of the interview questions are asked based on your past experience and achievements. So ensure that you are thorough in what you mention in that section. Start with the latest company that you have worked for or working for and three pieces of information that can just appear in one simple line. Say your company, your duration of work there and your latest designation. If you can mention the size of the industry and the company for which you have worked, that also gives a good idea of the bandwidth of how much work really you've done, how much experience you really have. Below this, you can briefly mention what were your key responsibility areas, your role in the company. This is also a good time to mention the projects that you have worked on and your achievements overall. Achievements that show the amount of work to top line or bottom line of your organizations are valued a lot. And fourth would be, I would like to know what kinds of transformative projects or initiatives the candidate has led and how those projects or initiatives contributed to the success of the organization in both measurable and qualitative ways. Again, remember to mention the growth in numbers and even awards or recognition that you might have got. For example, if candidates say that helped in conceptualizing social media campaigns, this would be rather generic. But did the campaign really result in any tangible metric? Did it result in significant numbers? That is key. Mention that. So here's what you can write instead. Increase 10 lakh website hits in a month by optimizing Instagram outreach of the company. Repeat the same process for the next company as well. Now I get it, this experience section is something that all freshers don't know what to really put in. It can vary from people in different positions as well. So we spoke with experts to try and understand what exactly are the two, three components that you must put in. Number one, the number of projects the candidate has completed during their academic journey. Number two, mention 
of what your involvement has been in extracurricular activities. And number three, a complete academic career on how the person has performed in it. Similarly, for mid and senior level candidates, HRs focus mainly on overall relevant experience which is required for the job. With that done comes the next segment which is your educational qualifications. Now your educational qualifications and how you present them is as important as your experience. Let's say you got an MBA, so right, Master in Business Administration, your college and the year of graduation. After this, you just uh, need to put in your final scores as well. Remember to put in any awards that you have received and projects that you have worked on. And the next thing of course to mention is your educational profile and your undergraduate degree. So that pretty much concludes your overall structure. But having understood it, let's move on to a couple of pro tips that you must keep in mind. And the next thing that you absolutely must keep in mind is a link to a robust LinkedIn profile. And as we told you right in the beginning of the video as well, including a LinkedIn profile has shown to boost interview rates. But the thing to remember here again is include a link, not just a handle. And here's you can actually do that. Select and write, click on the text and click on insert link. And there add the URL of the LinkedIn profile. This three second process can really go miles in landing you the dream interview. Another pro tip here is double check your profile on LinkedIn. Make sure it's updated and reflects all that you are claiming in your resume. Also remember, it is important to show some activity on your LinkedIn profile. Let it not be an empty one, of course. And finally, another real pro tip to remember is getting the right keywords and skill set mentioned in your CV. Now for keywords, it is very important to go back and read your job description, the job that you're applying for, that description that you really look into very, very carefully. Remember to mention the skill set you possess, skills you think that will help the company that you're applying for. Also mention the softwares, your pro in languages that you speak, read and write. It will always go a long way and give you an upper hand perhaps. When it comes to skills, remember to write something which you think will be useful for the company. It doesn't have to be false, but something which is a bit of a match. You'll have to think a little on that one. But going back to keywords over here, that is extremely crucial. This is important. Why? Because applicant tracking systems use specific keywords, skills and experience to filter candidates and in some cases rank resumes as well. This is where AI's role again comes in. And according to Belsac's research, an average job description, that includes about 43 keywords. Adding the relevant keywords always increases your chance of being including in that pool of selected candidates. And remember, it is not just about the number of keywords that you put in. It is about the right keywords that match the job. And how will you get that? Again, go back to the job description. HRs uh, always mention very carefully some of the keywords over there and that's where you really have to pick a match. Another pro tip here is that you should ideally customize your CV for the role required for the specific job rather than sending just one CV to all jobs that really come your way. It shows that you have researched for the job and are really keen and gungo for it. So having done all of that, now look at your CV and see how long really is it. While the structuring is important, your CV should not be extremely long. Now, this is not true for, say, academicians, people who have worked for over 15 to 20 years. But if you're not one of those, it's best to keep your CV not more than two pages long. Also, a good CV does not have spelling or grammatical mistakes. So ask someone to always proofread your CV before sending it to the recruiter. Avoid fancy fonts, keep it plain, keep it simple. So that pretty much concludes everything we have to tell you when it comes to CVs. I hope uh, this video was helpful. You have learned how to write that perfect CV and will be able to land a good job. Tell us in the comment section how the entire process has really been one. And if you land yourself a job in a startup and now wondering how to prepare for that interview, what questions to ask, we've also done a video for that. So you can always go and check that out as well. That's it from us. Thanks for watching and stay tuned to Money Control.